thank you all for being here today. Thank you for joining us. Um, if you don't know, I'm Kim Mayo. I'm a program specialist here with the DRCHSD program, um, which is providing this uh, webinar today. And this is, I cannot believe it, but the fifth um, and final webinar in a um, five-part series. And so today's webinar is, as you can see on your screen there, elevating your role as a communicator in your organization. And this webinar is being recorded as were the previous four, and um, they will all, they're posted on our website and this one will be posted as well. So um, several folks have already done this, but we do invite you to find that chat box, uh, type in your name, your organization and your title. And that just gives us a, helps us to know who's here with us. Um, we, do we do encourage you to use that chat box throughout today's session um, to ask any questions or any comments for discussion. And we'd love for you to, we'd love to hear from you. We'd also love to hear from you and see you. And so if you have an opportunity to use your camera and if you have the opportunity to unmute at any point, um, we would love to also hear from you. So we'll have uh, times for that, but feel free just to, to join in the conversation. We do ask that if you are not speaking, that you do keep your microphone muted. That just helps really to cut down on that feedback. So as you can see, um, the, <clears throat> the DRCH SD program is funded by the Federal Office of Rural Health Policy in collaboration with the Delta Regional Authority. All right, so today our presenter is um, Mike Milligan. He was here with us last week and we are very excited. He's the president of Legato and we are excited to have him here with us. Um, Mike is a healthcare communication strategist, educator and media trainer. He has directed strategic planning efforts for a variety of rural and other healthcare organizations, serving as counsel for CEOs and other executive team members. Uh, Mike is hi um, a highly requested speaker for healthcare national conferences and is a regular contributor to the industry publications and blogs. Before founding uh, Legato, Mike previously served in a communication leadership role for Previa Healthcare in Green Bay, Wisconsin, and director of public relations and strategic communications with Aurora Health um, Care in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. When he's not writing strategic communication plans, he enjoys spending time with his family, fishing, kayaking, and hiking with his two golden retrievers. So I think we have an agenda. Yep, pulled up. There we go. And so they, these are, this is what we'll be talking about today and the, um, the points for today. And I think we have a poll, a quick pre-session um, pre poll, which will be next. And Caleb can start that. And so just a couple of questions for you here. So we'd like to know how um, you feel about your understanding of how to evaluate your role in communications. So you have some choices there from confident, somewhat confident, neutral, somewhat unconfident, and confident. And then the second question up for today will be, we want to know about your understanding of how to engage with my organization's leaders to receive feedback and implement my plan of action. So again, we have confident, um, somewhat confident, and neutral, somewhat unconfident, and unconfident. So we'll give you guys just a second before Kayla closes those polls to complete those questions. All right, it looks like, it looks like we have some, a little bit of all over the board. So um, we will, uh, turn it over to Mike for him to, for, to share his knowledge with us. So hopefully that um, we can increase our knowledge. Sounds thanks, Mike, good, for, thanks. Have, for being here today. Well, thanks for having me. Um, and uh, thanks, everyone, for joining uh, this, this morning or maybe it's afternoon based on where you are. But um, one thing here, I just want to, here we go. So I'm just going to go back for a second, just review the agenda really quickly. But again, thanks, everyone, for joining. And I also just want to emphasize that um, I think some of the better webinars that we do and we're, when we get when we have some engagement where people are are sharing their ideas. So I'm sharing some insights with you, but, you know, you all have knowledge. We can help each other. And partly what we're going to be talking about, well, mainly what we're going to be talking about today, what's a little bit different about this particular webinar is this is more focused on professional development um, individually for you in some ways. Um, and. And so you know, what we're going to be talking about are 
ways to kind of elevate your role or the role of communications or whatever it might be in your organization. And um, and I know that just looking at, you know, who's on this call today, we have a really good attendance, but we have people from various disciplines. So we have, we have uh, people from C-suite, uh, you know, CEOs and other senior leaders and community champions and communication leaders and what have you. So would really encourage um, in particular those that are um, in a, a leadership role, feel free to chime in anywhere here and say, you know, um, if you know, I'm sharing some ideas and you have some other ideas to share, please, um, that, that would be great. So I'm coming from, you know, and Kim kind of gave the background a little bit of, you know, my, my bio and, um, and what I'm kind of re referring to more is almost, you know, yes, you know, I have lots of mentorship and leadership types of responsibilities in my current role, but before you know, um, founding Legato, as Kim mentioned, um, I was um, employed at a, a number of different healthcare facilities and, and really active, um, you know, from a senior perspective and had the opportunity to, you know, be at the boardroom and be, you know, um, you know, all of those different relationships that we have. And so I'm really taking and relying on those experiences as well in terms of um, you know the the guidance that I'm giving. So again, this is more of a professional development thing, but we're going to talk about you know what CEOs expect from their communication champions. And again, CEOs is a placeholder; it could, it could be you know any senior leader, but generally what they're expecting, and giving you some tips, personal tips on you know a uh, process to really look at how you can elevate your role um, in your organization and then forming an action plan from there. So I'm going to get all uh, <clears throat> esoteric with you here, but um, first thing is look in the mirror and what do you see, okay? And what I mean by that is that it's always a time for self-reflection, okay? And uh, we'll get overly academic with you here, but just to kind of uh, reinforce a couple things that um, have been helpful um, as I think about, you know, how I behave as a leader or as I was kind of coming up through the ranks, things like that. So you can see here, we have these two <clears throat> mindsets. We have um, a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. And then from there, what leads into that is there's something called static intelligence or fluid intelligence. Where we wanna be ultimately is that in that fluid intelligence part, okay? And this is where in the, you know, my experience and in conversations we've had with leaders and such, uh, this is what they're looking for. This is what they're looking for. And it doesn't, so as you are very well aware, I think, you know, you can be a leader, by the way, in an organization and title has nothing to do with it. I always look at <clears throat> leadership as, <clears throat> excuse me, as a behavior, not a title. It's how, you know, so <clears throat> as we look, excuse me. <clears throat> so as we look at this and we look at, okay, the static intelligence, Generally, you know, you want to look smart. You have a tendency to kind of play it kind of safe. You know, maybe you're going to avoid the challenges, kind of be low risk. Um, you know, um, you're not really that interested in feedback. Um, you're kind of more threatened by it in many ways, or you might be threatened by the success of others. And then to the contrary is, you know, um, embracing challenges, um, Really, when you look at setbacks, you look at those as opportunities. Wow, what can I learn from them? Those types of things. Um, and learn from criticism. So, and this is just really critical because, um, again, when I kind of get into that behavior part of things, this is where when you think about, you know, there are a lot of people you think about in organizations that are extremely intelligent and they know what they're doing, but in terms of how do they actually, you know, advance in an organization, it's having these types of skills too, or the emotional intelligence, which is a whole nother webinar, but just in terms of um, having that type of behavior that demonstrates that um, you're an approachable person and one that um, has the skills and the emotional skills to advance um, uh, in the organization and to advance the organization. So uh, before we get into some specifics, I'd like to just do uh, uh, kind of a quick uh, survey and you can either, you know, as uh, Kim said, if you want to just chime in, unmute yourself, and then mute yourself back when you're done. If you want to just blurt some things out, great. Or if you're more comfortable going to the chat box. But the questions are just, if you, just, you know, what, what qualities or skills do you think right now? Do you think 
CEOs or senior leaders, what do they want in their communications champion? What are what are some of those skills or some of those behaviors or, or qualities? Whoops. Sorry. I just gave you answers, so don't look at those. <laughs> <laughs> Kim, do we have people chiming in here? I'm opening the chat box here. I don't see anything yet. I just opened it as well. Okay. Don't be shy, people. Okay. To be personable. <laughs> personable, absolutely. Mm -hmm. My first thought was articulate. Articulate. Yep. Very good. Social. Social. <laughs> Trustworthy. Great. And how about from a skill standpoint, what are some of the skills that we, those are all, all good traits, but what are some of the skills that people might be looking for? Knowledgeable, knowable, mm -hmm. organized, confident, mm -hmm. grounded and patient. Yes, absolutely. Ability to problem solve. Volume and clarity. I hope that wasn't a reference to me. I hope you can all hear me well. <laughs> <laughs> Ability to problem solve. Absolutely. Yes. That's that's a biggie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good comments. Good. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. So excellent start. So just to kind of add to that a little bit, I'm going to you hit on some of these. Um, and by the way, we, you know, in preparation, for this webinar, you know, we've talked to a number of our clients as well and used our experience. And these are some of the some of the feedback that we've gotten on this too. And again, our 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 clients are generally in the rural health uh, area. Um, so, forward thinker. So, and we'll talk about this in a second. But yes, we have to be tactical. But we have the problem solving part of that to me is one of the bigger ones where it's it's you you know people know that you're a go-to person that you're not going to look for ways to not do something, but you're going to look for ways to get something done. You're not necessarily going to be one of those people that's, oh, we've always, we've tried that before. It doesn't work, but you're going to look at the challenge and say, how can we make that happen? Um, and, and it's that kind of mentality that really positions you um, in the organization as being someone that, um, that people are going to rely on and ultimately that they're going to depend on more and need you more. So, you know, some of the things certainly, and even as, as we look at communications or you're in the role of maybe marketing, what have you, you know, that there's a lot of things that are tactical in nature, but just translating, yes, those are important, but really having a better understanding of the bigger picture. So, um, you know, so what's on the minds of CEOs, of course, and one part is, you know, um, besides, you know, patient quality of care and those types of things, but being able to to meet our margins and producing revenue and what kind of results uh, do we have? And we'll talk about this a little bit more detail, but being really budget minded to understand, you know, OK, um, you know, one of the, you know, one of the common things is that we know that we're limited in resources in rural health um, and we can't always get the resources that we need. Um, so, you know, really trying to look for ways to get certain work done without adding more expense. Um, you guys hit on some of this already being a direct communicator really important uh being able to you know kind of take um uh, feedback readily uh collaborate with others and a problem solver so those you know wouldn't be a big surprise to you but just kind of as a good reminder that these are these are the types of qualities that are really important for us to um you know make sure that we're living so as i've kind of hinted here a little bit communications overall you know yes there's there's tactical parts of it and functional things that you could do, but I would really encourage us to think in terms of how we elevate our roles in the organization to really, in many ways, position the role of communications larger in your organization. So in other words, um, you know, it, it takes some time to maybe build the role of your department or of you individually, where maybe historically, People might say, well, that's the person that does the special events or that's the person that does the brochures or what have you. But again, if they're looking at you more as a leader and solving those problems um, and being proactive, you know, looking at, OK, I see this opportunity. And we're going to talk about this in a second as we do 
um, you know, some planning for your organization, but seeking those opportunities, bringing those ideas to the forefront first, instead of kind of waiting, you know, and, 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 and bringing solutions. Oh, I see this opportunity. This is something that I think that we should do. Um, so really, like I say, just kind of changing those paradigms of, of what the role of communications is and having it be viewed as more strategic. And my, my takeaway on this is that you can't really wait for someone to do that for you. It's one of those things where if you're going to elevate the role of communications, it's about, you know, being proactive and having you know, leadership uh, qualities to, to bring certain things forward. I know it's easier said than done, but but that's the general premise. So I want to get a little bit more specific uh, into this now. So uh, just in terms of, you know, maybe some more specific steps. So we have a six step process um, to elevate the role of communications. The first is, and I've, I've, I've hinted about this a little bit, but it's really taking on the mindset of a CEO. What are on his or what is on his or her mind? What, what are the things that, that keeps that person um, up at night, what are the main concerns? Again, you as a communicator might have certain issues um, or community champion, whatever, that there's certain things that are on the top of your mind, but they're not necessarily in the top of mind of that, um, of that CEO. And so again, when you kind of think about those problem solving efforts and those types of things, how can your role um, take on the challenges that are, uh, um, uh, on the mind of that CEO. And we'll talk in, in a second about some direct ways that we should have some interaction with them. But one of the first things when we kind of talk about this, this knowledge is whether or not you're involved in the strategic plan of your organization, becoming familiar with it regardless. You know, people might think, well, they're, uh, maybe they don't need to know that because they're in this role. Um, I can just tell you from experience, and we'll talk about this in the finance part of it as well, that leaders senior leaders generally really admire when people in different positions are seeking out new information um that they're demonstrated that they want to learn that they want to grow i've uh, seen very few leaders who don't you know encourage that and, and allow that to happen so um so then when you look at that again when you're kind of looking at that whole proactive part of things really understand that strategic plan you know some some strategic plans are are better than others, but generally speaking, you know, the strategic plan should be focused on things like, you know, uh, uh, you know, employee relations, physician engagement, physician recruitment, quality, um, you know, certainly that finances, the growth of the organization. And you look and say, okay, what I do in my organization, how could I impact that? You might even get to a point where you're maybe even suggesting changes in your position to better accommodate those needs. Maybe you see a gap in your in your organization and you say, oh, and, because I, I can tell you from my experience that I've done that where I've written my own job descriptions and I've come into my boss and said, um, you know, um, I'm doing this right now, but I see this as an unmet need. And they say, yeah, I didn't think about that, you know. So, um, so anyway, part of that strategic plan is is um, like I said, understanding the finances, gaining access to the data, just really asking questions, really just making sure you're understanding it. So, and again, that starts with, you know, you may or may not be um, a data person, you know, so it's not like you have to be a statistician, okay? But just kind of understanding the basics and, and you know, I'm gonna talk in a second about how I think part of the process here is encouraging you to, sit down with your CEO and kind of do an interview and that kind of thing. But you could do this as well with your CFO, other people uh, in your organization um, to, you know, people want to help people. People love it when, first of all, when you are, you're approached and people want to know about more about your job or tapping you for your expertise, things like that. Um, sometimes you just have to, to ask and they're just, there are no dumb questions, you know? And so really understanding, okay, where are we currently as an organization with our volumes? Where do we need to increase? Um, from a revenue standpoint, where are things coming from? Um, awareness or perception, you know, what's a, maybe things are available, maybe they're not. Um, for instance, one of the things that I see is one of the more, and many of you are probably involved in doing your community health needs assessments, 
But oftentimes what I see is that we're kind of doing it to get it done, but we're really not going back and referring to it. We're really, you know, in other words, we're identifying what some of the unmet needs are in our organization to, to kind of check the box off. But then when we go, are we really going back and saying, okay, uh, we see that there's an unmet need for, um, you know, tobacco use in our, in our, in our county or for, um, you know, teenage pregnancy or obesity or whatever it might be. Okay, do we, you know, what what are we doing as an organization? Do are we really, are we really taking that on? And that might be one of those proactive things where you are going back to your leadership and saying, I noticed this in the community health needs assessment. I see this as a gap. This is something that I think would be um, a recommendation uh, that I have in order to address this. You know, those types of things. And then awareness also comes in the the uh, perspective if your organization has done any kind of community perception studies or anything like that, um, you know, just to kind of be aware of those things too and, and know where your organization, how it's being perceived. Referrals, you know, just really understanding, okay, where where is our business coming from? Who's referring to what? Where are there gaps? Those things can help you as well. And just, you know, the more information that you have, I guess is my point, is the more likely you are then to identify ideas and opportunities. If you don't have all the facts, then it's really hard to come up with solutions. You know, you're just kind of guessing. So again, part of that is, um, this may, you know, may or may not be relevant to your position, but I still would um, say that you should be involved in this is understanding, you know, what what information is currently out there in terms of uh, your over, and maybe some of this was in your community health needs assessment, but, um, Where's the business coming from right now? What kind of changes are occurring in your market that maybe we need to accommodate? Do we have a do we have a certain demographic that's that's um, increasing in numbers in our organization? Do what do we need to do as an organization to potentially accommodate that? So, um, you know, so lots of things just to kind of, you know, maybe plant a seed with you and just you know things to think about. Um, and of course, you know, leaders, um, CEOs, others love measurement, right? <laughs> Um, you know, and your strategic plan hopefully is done in the right way that it actually has measurable goals as well. Um, but, you know, depending on what your role is, um, you know, from a communications perspective, there's lots of analytics as far as, you know, people that might attend events, people that go on how many, you know, websites, how many emails do they open? Um, and then there's business goals like, you know, did we increase market share? Um, did we increase number of patients, all those sort of things. But um, in your recommendations that you might provide or in your ideas to really always think about what kind of metrics can we have um, to be able to come back and show what we did. One of the key things I would say too is that when you do have measurements of whatever you might be doing, a true demonstration of leadership is to also acknowledge when something didn't work well. Okay. You should, you know, it's, it's, it's about advancing the organization. So let's say you did a particular effort. Um, you know, let's say it was a community event and you had a really low showing. Okay. Report that you had a really low showing, maybe explain why or why you think it did. Was there something that you could have done better? What were, you know, um, and use the data as a learning tool. Those are ways that um, you really demonstrate your leadership skills, your ability in an organization to not be focused on you, but to focus on what's right for the organization and have that that fluid mindset that we talked about before, where you're learning, um, you're learning from your experiences and knowing that you need to continue to learn. So, so with that, that little lecture. Uh, I want to just uh, take a, a quick respite here and uh, uh, have another question here that we can answer in the chat box or to speak up. But just in general, what kind of measurable uh, data do you currently track? And again, they could be from a communications perspective or business perspective. What, but what kinds of data are you currently tracking in, in your role in your organization? Okay, everybody don't type at once. <laughs> or do you track anything in your organization? 
Medicare share data. Okay, great. So looking more at payer mix and those types of things. We got our red line at the bottom of our slide again here, Kim. I'm not sure where that's coming from. <laughs> I don't know. It's a mystery. <laughs> uh, Facebook followers, web metrics, perfect. Uh, community events, participation, uh, super, great. Registration for inpatient, outpatient, awesome. Just a little tip there um, when you're, you know, the registrations and things like that is always look at what your um, your intake process is and if there are ways to make sure that you are allowing people to opt in um, to receive information and a lot of that, there's a lot of ways too that um, we need to better utilize our electronic uh, medical records as well for communications to people. Uh, clinic goals, so um, and those clinic goals could, it, you know, I assume that could be financial, what, you know, what other types of goals might there be uh, within, you know, when we say clinic goals, recruitment possibly, overall employee satisfaction, Google Analytics, okay, good stuff, good, good, good. So you gotta get the idea, um, HCAP scores, yep, perfect, yep, absolutely. And so the key is, and we'll talk about this in a second, is are you what are you doing with that data? Is there something that you can do individually that maybe we are fully taking advantage of in the organization? So I'm gonna kind of move on here, but good, good feedback, thank you all. So from a, as an example, you know, there are a lot of good communication things that are mentioned here. Uh, but then, you know, as we look at, you know, if we have access to certain data um, that we're looking ahead a little bit, and sometimes you might have available, to, you might have someone in your organization that might have um, access to this kind of, uh, kind of information, um, and it might just be there and you don't know it's there. But, you know, if you're fortunate enough, for instance, to have access to, like the healthcare advisory board, which, you know, is not always feasible, but there's some, there's some, um, we use that and there's a lot of information that you can gather from that in terms of just forecasting out what a particular, uh, you know, what a particular need is going to be in your organization five years, 10 years from now. If you have that kind of data, you can kind of see again um, how that might prompt some ideas to come to the forefront or maybe new ideas that you have uh, for <clears throat> uh, new services that need to uh, come uh, into your organization. And then, you know, from a goal perspective as well, if you have some real data on, you know, particular procedures and how you're doing, um, then you can form um, some specific goals around them and, and have your communication focus on those areas. Certainly, and I, some of your responses here refer to this, so just understanding, you know, overall where we are in volumes, if you have information in terms of understanding, you know, where you're going to be in the future, again, that prompts ideas for you. So, so that's kind of the data part. Now I'm gonna move on to the next part, and I kind of hinted on this a little bit, but um, scheduling an interview with your CEO is as basic as that may sound. And again, it doesn't have to be your CEO, but it's a senior leader. And as I mentioned, you know, leaders love it when people are seeking more information, when they wanna learn more about the business. This isn't something that you have to be intimidated by. And, and what you wanna do is, you know, be prepared but in again, if you're not reporting to a CEO, you want to follow the proper protocol in your organization. If you need to kind of get clearance from whoever you might report to, so you don't, um, you know, stir up the the corporate hierarchy. But whatever that process is, but but to sit down um, with that CEO and ask certain questions, you know, what and really ask them, okay, um, what you know, ideally, and, and be open to, to to critique. But what ideally, what do you think is the role of communications in our organization? Um, and how does where where is there a gap right now between what we're currently doing and what you ideally would like to see? And ask them how do they define success? It's a really simple question, but it really helps you in terms of defining goals. Um, and you know, do they define success as you know meeting certain metrics, or do they define success as you know making sure our employees' uh, satisfaction scores are higher, or patient satisfaction? scores are high or, you know, what specifically are, how, how are they defining success for you? Um, and of course, as I mentioned, where would you like to see improvements in the service 
of what I specifically deliver. Um, you know, where can I grow as a, as a professional, um, you know, and as a leader? And what suggestions were, would you have for me to better understand the finances of healthcare? And I hit on that a little bit, but I truly think it's not all about finances by any means, but I really feel that um, uh, people in communications, that they really understand more of the business of healthcare uh, they're in a much better position to bring up new ideas and actually uh, build credibility in their organizations as well. Um, I want to take a quick pause just for, um, I know that there's some uh, senior leaders that are on the um, on the call right now, and I just love to hear from you if, um, you know, what you think of this idea and if, uh, if people would schedule something with you, what are some of the other things that you think that maybe um, they should ask you. I'd, I'd just love to, and if you if you are able to, to participate, I'd love that. And just let's just do that by voice. If you just unmute yourself and just share a couple ideas, that would be great. Don't be shy. Do I have to call on people? <laughs> I, I was just going down through the list thinking, okay, I know we've got, I know we've got some CEOs on here for sure. And some senior leadership. Dan, uh, Dan, I'm going to pick on you. What do you think? Are you on the, are you on the line? Danny's. He's multitasking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll move on, but just if, uh, oh, there there's on the line. Hey, Dan. Um, okay. Sorry, if you don't mind me picking on you a little bit, I just wanted to get your opinion on uh, what we're talking about here is uh, the idea of where we look at communications folks to really to learn more about the organization to kind of sit down with a CEO and at, you know really interview them and ask them some questions about how how they can be uh, more effective leaders. And on the screen here, I I just kind of mentioned some things that I think they should they should ask a CEO to you know like you know what um how do you define success as a leader for those of, that are in a communications role what you know um and uh you know improvements that that you might like to see or suggestions for how they can better understand the finances of the organization and i guess my question to you is um is that something that you would generally encourage and if someone were to sit down with you what are some other things that you think maybe they should they should ask you to make sure that they're more effective um, in their in their organization. Well, I, I think communications with the CEO is very important. I think uh, for that person to understand the direction the CEO wants the hospital to go, and then come up with uh, metrics on how to measure that success. Are we mm -hmm. moving that that way? Mm -hmm. uh, the question to the CEO would be. Is there something you think I can be doing differently? Mm -hmm. uh, Great. Uh, I think they should also bring things to the CEO and say that I have these thoughts based upon our last conversation and things. Super. Like that. Great. So bring actually, you know, solutions to you as well. I mean, that it right. doesn't mean you're necessarily going to do them, but I think, um, you know, you have to look at a number of different variables. But, but as a leader, you want to see that, right? And that's something that's you want to feel. Absolutely. Yeah. Very important. Yeah. Yeah, good. No, thank you. Thanks for letting me. Thanks for letting me call on you, and <laughs> okay. appreciate appreciate that. Yeah. So you're off the hook for a while, okay? All right. All right. <laughs> thank you. If anybody else wants to chime in, please do. Otherwise, I'll kind of I'll kind of keep moving here. Um, so anyway, in terms of that interview with the CEO, like I said, mentioned, not everything is going to be, um, you know, considered, but the idea is to bring those ideas. Uh, forward. And what we want to do is, you know, agree on, you know, really have a discussion about what are these goals? Let's agree on them and, um, you know, and try to get specific as possible. And then, you know, once you do that, and again, it might just be, it might be more than just a CEO, you might ultimately bring these conversations more to a, to a leadership group or what have you. But I think first, you know, having that upfront conversation with the CEO, um, and then once maybe you'd go to a senior level, uh, you know, to the senior management or whatever, you already have kind of that backing of the CEO to know that you've you've had these conversations. And there are a lot of different ways to form goals and you've kind of hit on some of them. 
from a communication standpoint, but some other ideas here are strengthening referral patterns, patient volumes, um, increasing awareness, patient engagement in terms of health screenings, those types of things, lots of different ways um, that we can form some specific goals. So I've kind of hit two then on the, you know, the knowledge part of this and being a forward thinker. So just to, you know, emphasize a few things here, again, really, you know, you, you, first of all, you can learn a lot of things from a lot of people in your organization, no question about it. And it doesn't always have to be a senior leader. You know, it could be, I mean, in any key role. I mean, sometimes it's, um, you know, someone who's heading up quality or, or compliance or nursing or whatever it is. Um, I always learn by just asking questions. And again, people, you know, maybe you look and say, I'm going to take different people to lunch. You know, I want to just and pick their brain a little bit on what they do and what they learn. I mean, you, you can never learn too much information. Um, but then I'd say just even outside of your organization is looking for opportunities for growth, whether or not they are webinars like you're doing today or, uh, you know, you know, uh, conferences. And I think, you know, they're starting to open up a little bit from COVID if you're able to do that or, you know, virtual conferences and, and things like that. Um, you know, learning, reading, um, just you should really never stop doing that. So the other thing is kind of keeping an eye out of what other healthcare organizations are doing if you're part of different associations or groups, things like that. Um, but even keeping an eye of what your what your competitors are doing too, and seeing if there are the there are some things that maybe um, we should be considering or, or or not as well. So, um, so speaking of the competitive analysis, I found that this is one of the uh, very effective ways for um, for a communications person to build instant credibility with a senior leadership team, and that is to do. Um, a competitive analysis and, and to bring that forward um, to a leadership group. The competitive analysis doesn't always need to be data driven, but it's really, I mean, if it can be, it's great. But what I'm talking about is, you know, taking the time to look at who are all the competitors? Um, what are they doing from a programmatic perspective? Um, you know, what are some of the, some of the things you see in terms of what they might be doing well from a customer service perspective or a communications perspective, or what are some of the vulnerable, vulnerable parts of the weakness part of things. And then based on that, are there, yes, you want some observations, but then um, are there some recommendations of things that maybe we don't know for sure that we should do, but at least that we should study that. So, so in other words, and these are some examples of some things, you know, areas of focus, um, community partnerships, what kind of media coverage they're getting. These are things that senior leaders love to see and even boards of directors and things like that as well. But, you know, and for you to be proactive about this and not even being asked to do this, but to say, you know, I thought it was a good opportunity and I've done this analysis and I, I think it would be, um, you know, um, a good use of time for me to present my findings and, and, and to pre present some recommendations of some areas in which I think we might study or consider. Um, you know, and and oftentimes, and again, I know you have your regular job to do, but as things are identified, uh, there might be certain things that are assigned to you, and those are things that elevate your role and your value in the organization, and 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 also elevate, frankly, the role of communications overall as being, um, as we've kind of talked before, not just tactical but more strategic in nature. So, uh, part of that in terms of being strategic in nature is. You know, you've done that upfront work, you've done some preliminary work in terms of understanding where the organization is, and that's then to develop kind of an overall plan of action um, for the year. And so you're going to apply that knowledge, you're going to gain consensus, you've kind of done that already in terms of that those discussions about what are the measurable goals, um, let's spell those out, and then you're developing strategies and a budget, you know, to go with that. So you've done that upfront work, then you know, if you're not doing, you know, a, a communications plan at this point, um, you should be. And even if you are, kind of go back and look at it and say, is it based on, you know, doing some upfront work? Is it based on um, some objectives and some focus and those types of things? And the fact that you, if you've done some of that upfront work already, and maybe you've done the competitive analysis and you've, you've done the, uh, you know, the interviews with people and all of that, you have so much more credibility already 
then when you come back in and you say, okay, here's our recommendations for um, a communications plan. I realize what I'm saying is that not necessarily applicable to everyone here. I think it just it kind of depends on your role a little bit, but I think the concepts are the same in terms of you know having those relationships, learning that information, bringing ideas forward. Um, I, I think those are just you know fundamental tenets of how to build um, your role in your organization. All right, just a few other things here, and we'll uh, wrap this up and take it uh, for questions. So. It's just an example of a plan, but what we're saying here is just to kind of spell it out and what we're going to do, when we're going to do it, those types of things. Um, this this part here is, again, you demonstrate leadership by leading in the first place. So so leading the process. So you've had that plan. Um, as you're even putting that, together, that plan together, invite people to the table to share their ideas. But then also as you're looking at uh, those metrics, you're reporting on how we're doing against those metrics. And as I mentioned before, you know, use dashboards as a working document uh, and and demonstrate our successes and our failures. Again, if, if everything's just Pollyannish and we're, we're doing everything perfectly, um, that probably isn't realistic, but how, what can we learn from? Um, so, and then even comparing that data as you've done it more, comparing things over time. This is just an example and you don't have to have it be as fancy as this, but there's a lot of easy software that you can use as well, but um, or you can use Excel or whatever, but, you know, look for ways to, to uh, you know, put the data in a visual perspective as well. Um, so and the last tenet is being visible. Now, it's sometimes a little harder now with some of us who maybe are working remotely, right? So there's a different, I guess it's a, in, in many ways, it adds a, a, a new challenge, but I think um, visible is an area where you're, you know, it doesn't always have to be physically in person. And sometimes maybe you're accommodating more if it is remotely of what kind of check-ins do you have and what kind of regular meetings do you have and those types of things. But, you know, kind of coming from the perspective of in the office, if you will, you know, get out of the office, listen, walk around, talk to people. I mentioned, you know, taking people to lunch, but view your organization through the eyes of a patient. Think about, you know, from a patient experience standpoint, oftentimes, when maybe I'll go into a, a new client, um, I walk the organization and just observe. I observe, you know, what what are things like at the front desk? Was I greeted? Was there someone there? Uh, what's the signage like? Uh, you know, the wayfinding. Uh, uh, you know, everything. Just just really taking it all in, and and you should definitely do that for your organization as well. Um, looking at ways when you're visible of supporting the hospital's role in the community, different events, things like that, which you're probably doing already. And I've kind of mentioned the regular updates um, with senior leaders, but also, you know, making sure that you're active in maybe employee forums and, and things like that. So, so to kind of wrap this up in terms of any questions that we might have, um, in terms of what did we learn today, hopefully... Uh, we learned some insights in terms of what CEOs are expecting from their champions, and then a process in terms of how to elevate that role from taking on the mindset of a CEO, scheduling an interview with he or she, um, gaining knowledge as a forward thinker, developing a plan overall, leading that process, and being visible in your organization. So I think before we take questions, we just kind of want to do this uh, wrap up poll again and see if we moved any numbers. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. Looks like Caleb has put those um, questions up there. And yes, we'd love to just complete those. And as you're completing those, just be thinking about questions or comments for discussion. So again, that first question is, we'd like to know how your understanding of how to evaluate um, your role in communications. And again, you have the same choices, confident, somewhat confident, neutral, somewhat unconfident, and unconfident. And then that second question is that we would like to know about your understanding of how to engage with your organization's leaders to receive feedback and implement um, a plan of action. And again, you have confident, somewhat, somewhat confident, neutral, somewhat unconfident, and confident. And then that last question there is, um, how do you feel about applying the knowledge gain from this um, training to improve your organization, organization's community outreach and education efforts? And again, have the same choices, confident, somewhat confident, neutral, somewhat unconfident, and unconfident. 
We'll leave those up for a second and Caleb can close that out when he feels confident in the answers. Oh, big uh, improvement. Yeah. Yay. People are just being nice maybe, but that's, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, it was good before, but we definitely we have all the scores uh, in the top tier, at least for question one. Uh, yeah. Oh, excellent. Yeah. That's good. That's Thank that's you. really good. To, that's really good to see. That's great. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for completing that. Now we would love to hear from you. We would love to hear. Are you just being nice, or <laughs> did you learn something? And you know, is there anything you would like to share, or any questions you would like to ask? Um, and again, this is our last in the series, so um, you know, just kind of think about from an overall perspective. And we would love to just we have a few minutes for discussion, so um, would love to just entertain that while we have um, our, our expert on hand. Yeah, and again, anybody that wants to speak up because I think we learn from each other. But I'm uh, I'm also just very interested in if there are other leaders in the organization, you know, um, of you know, I guess want to, you know, you agree with these recommendations and if there's anything else that you might add to it or just any other insight, I think it's just really helpful to hear um, directly from you. It's, we have people that are on here from di different disciplines in the organization, in their organizations. Well, I will talk. I will always talk. So I'll talk. Thank you, Patty. <laughs> um, well, one thing you mentioned was, you know, making sure that our management team is on, uh, is aware, you know, of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, sure. And one thing that I did this year for the first time um, in the history of the hospital is I actually did a marketing plan for each revenue producing department of okay. the hospital, you know, with Great. their goals, you know, using smart goals, that kind of thing. And mm -hmm. um, I submitted it to my board and y'all honestly, I thought no one would read it. And I've been so impressed with the number of board members who have contacted me who have said, sure. hey, I read the plan and like, I, I really like that concept of breaking it down and having the managers have ownership. And my managers actually were much more excited about it than I thought they would be because Excellent. I just kind of approached it with them. I said, pretend this is your boutique. This is your business. Mm -hmm. Like, what would you do? And some Love of them it. were like, oh, well, the way we did this is all straight up. Like it's, you know, the first thing that's happened is, the, and I'm like, why haven't you told us this? You've been the manager this department for 30 years and you're awesome, you know, and they're exactly. and it's, it's giving them ownership and it also mm -hmm. gives them a chance to, they go out with me. Um, I have a rotating schedule and once a quarter they go out with me marketing. And um, even though some of them have been in this role 30 years, it's amazing how many of our providers don't actually know their face, you know, and so it's cool <laughs> because then they it opens that conversation of well you know every time we try to schedule so and so with your we run into this ball and it's it's just been great and i've been very impressed with how much how they're excited about it it's fun to them because it's so different than what they normally do so they're like oh i saw this cute idea on pinterest let's do this you know and um and it kind of gives me the energy too because you know marketing is typically a very lonesome job in a way i mean you're in your own little silo you're doing your own thing you know you do the same ideas and so I just want to throw that out there that, you know, my board really impressed me with how interested they were. And the second thing you mentioned, that's actually something I've never really tapped into. I've always talked about the successes, but I've never really talked about, you know, those things when, you know, I take my own Saturday to come to something and three people come all day long. You know, mm -hmm. so, I mean, that was neat that you suggested that. And that's something I'm going to start doing, too, is, is mm -hmm. you know, sharing those failures as well. You know, like, hey, we tried, but what, you know, mm -hmm. do y'all have any input for us on how this would be successful next time? So mm -hmm. I do appreciate Excellent. all that information. Okay. I am, somebody said, where am I located? I am in Monroeville, Alabama. Okay, super. Super. Um, first of all, thank you. That's excellent feedback. And I think one of the things you discovered yeah. is that people just needed to be asked, right? <laughs> they just needed to, they just needed to be involved. And you're right, because oftentimes um you know the people that are you know that are doing the jobs in their areas they they oftentimes you know they're seeing the patients firsthand they know what the motivations are they know what the questions are that people are asking they might know what the objections are to things as well um you know we as marketers you know we you know there are some there there are some venues where it's like okay everybody wants to be a marketer but but you and you kind of balance that out, you know what I mean? Because you still want the ideas, um, and because that's that's the best way that you're going to have success is to have that 
um, you know, more of that input and that interaction and the buy-in from, from those leaders as well. So good, thank you so much. Looks like someone would like to have your contact information, Patty, so. I put it in the chat box. Oh, okay, sounds good. Okay, sounds good. Um, any other input? Very good, thank you. Like any any other uh, any other ideas that we haven't shared today as far as ways that um, that communications uh, uh, leaders can advance their role or uh, yeah advance their role or their their value in an organization. Kind of hit the high points already. So good. Well, unless there are other questions, I hope that this was very helpful, at least giving you some insights or some things to think about. Uh, very grateful to be able to be part of this and to be part of this session. And and uh, hopefully we'll have the opportunity to, uh, to maybe meet at a, a future educational opportunity. So, um, and I know, um, Kim, that uh, I believe these slides are available or for everybody already, yeah. right? Okay, sounds good. Yeah, they will be um, on our website along with the recording. Um, yeah, so we do, we do we um, we appreciate you, Mike, and the whole Legato team very much for um, just this wonderful series. And we also uh, Caleb is going to post a link to the overall evaluation. Look at him on it right there. This is um, will take you to SurveyMonkey, and it's how we and it's just a couple of questions, and so it will evaluate the the series um, overall. Um, and so it's in the chat box. You can click on that link now if you have just a few moments to complete that. Um, and we would love to hear from that. Caleb will be sending an email uh, following um, this session later this afternoon that will have um, links to all the session, maybe not today's, it's not posted quite yet. It, there's a little bit of lag time before we can get that posted. Um, we will have the links to the previous four sessions and um, also a link to that survey. So that'll be coming out this afternoon in case you didn't get it off of the, um, the chat um, right now. So we're, we're just very grateful um, for Mike and um, the whole Legato team for putting this um, wonderful webinar series together. And again, it is recorded. So we do encourage you to go back and refresh or encourage other um, members of your organization that did not get to watch this information. It will be available for them um, on our website and we'll get that sent out to you. And um, we, um, we are very, very grateful for all of you attending. Um, I think um, we, um, <laughs> we, uh, we thank you so much for um, just your patience with us and just learning along with us. And we hope that you have a great rest of your day and a great Thanksgiving as well. So we'll see you all next time. Okay, take care everyone. Thank you.